Right, so hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So as promised, in this tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to actually create the GUI version of the rock paper scissors game that we created in the last tutorial. So I thought it was going to be a lot harder but turns out it's a lot easier. So without further ado, let's begin. First off I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code like always and then we're going to go in there and create a new file. So Control N and we're going to save this file as um, RPS GUI 2 because I've got another file in there which I was playing around with earlier .py because it is a Python file. Now make sure I'm saving this to this desktop right here and then I'll save it. Cool. Once you have your file all saved up what you want to do next is we're going to be working on a few imports. So we're going to need import random to allow the computer to make random choices on either rock paper or scissors and we're going to be needing to import all the stuff from Tekinta just to make life a lot easier. So Tekinta is going to help us deal with all the graphic stuff. First off we're going to create our master screen which we're going to assign to TK. So I'm going to call this uh, my main screen. We're only going to have one screen in this game anyway. So if I run this quickly just to show you how it works it's going to pop up with a little window but before that we need to make sure we're putting it in a main loop. So master.main loop make sure that it doesn't shut off straight away otherwise we don't even see it cool so as you see right here that's what it does now let's give it a title master.title and we're going to give it a title of rps because rock paper scissors so if you guys are not familiar with a lot of tekinta i'm going to be um, listing a series in the description which is going to be a little playlist for beginners to intermediate programmers in tekinta so it's going to help you learn tekinta a lot better and then you can come back to this tutorial if you already know what you're doing, then carry on. So now I'm going to create a section for the labels, which is pretty much a widget in Tikinto that pretty much lets us put um, some text to the screen. So my first label is going to be on my master, because that's where I want to place it. I'm going to give it some text. I'm going to call it rock, paper, uh, scissors. Give it some space as well. I'm not sure why I didn't leave space there, but it's okay. I'm going to do font, which is another attribute that you can assign, equals brackets, speech marks and calibri. Feel free to use whichever font you like. I'm going to go with a font size of 14. And now finally, I'm going to place it on a grid. So using grid, I can place it on row 0. And then I can say sticky equals north, which pretty much means I want it to the center of the screen. Padding y equals 10 which means I want it to be 10 units um, um, space from the top and 10 units space from the bottom and then give it a padding X of 20 which means, uh, I mean 200 actually which means I want it to be that wide so if I run it now we're going to have a wider window than we had earlier so the padding X gives it the 100 units on the left and 100 units on the right to put it right in the center cool, so we have our heading and a basic GUI application I mean it's not even an application so far but hey it's something to start with now since we've got that we're going to need a few more labels which is what I'm going to be copying and pasting. So I'm going to copy and paste the um, same line again and then in the next line I'm going to change the text to um, please, oops, please select an option because we're going to be giving the users options of course to select from rock paper or scissors. So I'm going to change the font size to 12 because this is like a subheading. The row obviously changes to 2 if I can type, I mean a row changes to 1 because we've got 0 and then sticky equals north. The padding we don't really need. So let's run this quickly just to show you how it looks. And voila we have a subheading which says select an option. Now good progress so far, I'm going to copy this line 10 and we're going to probably going to have to paste it again but before that the next label that we're creating needs to be assigned to a variable. So I'm going to explain more about let later. So we're going to have a player score label, which is going to be assigned to a label. Oh, what happened there? Okay, for some reason it doesn't let me. So I'm just going to copy it like this and then paste it. Okay, cool. So we are going to be assigning this label to player score very um, player score label right here, and then the dot grid we need to capture that. Control X. Hold on to it for a moment. And in here, the text is going to be, let's say, do, 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 player zero, because obviously the game's going to start with the player being at score zero. Then I'm going to do next line and player score label, 
and then paste my dot grid statement that I had cut before. So dot grid row equals two this time because obviously we need to increase the row each time we go and sticky equals west. So let's place that on the west. Let's run this again. And as you see right here, we have a little label saying player and score equals zero. Sticky equals west puts it on the proper left of the screen. Um, we're going to put the computer uh, score label on the very right. So we're going to use sticky equals east. So I'm going to copy and paste these two lines right here to do the computer um, score label as well. So I'm going to change player score label to computer score label. Because if we have a player score, we need a computer score as well. Now the row is going to stay the same because we're just going to change the direction in which it's placed. So in, where, in sticky equals west, it's on the left and now it's going to be on the right because we're going to use sticky equals east. Cool. So now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and change the text from player equals zero to computer equals zero. Now let's run this quickly. And as you see, we have a neat looking GUI right here, the way we have the player score zero and computer score zero on the right. Cool. So now that we've got that sorted as well, let's go ahead and create a label for the player choice. This label is going to show the user what choice they made. So player choice label equals, and once again, we are in the copy and paste business, so we might as well do it again. I'm going to paste the whole thing again since I've already explained it. And in the player choice label, we do not need any text. We're just going to leave it blank because we don't know what the um, player is going to choose by default. We're going to find out based on what the player chooses later. So all we need to do is master and then the font. Um, if you want that to, you don't need to mention the font. It's up to you. I just like to have a font in there. So I'm going to do player choice label. Uh, I mean choice, not score. Choice label dot grid. And now it's time to place this stuff. So player choice label is going to be on a grid where row equals three because the last one we did was two. And then sticky equals east. Oh, what did I do there? Row equals three, comma sticky equals east. Cool. Now, just like we have a player choice label, we also need to know what the computer chose. So we're going to paste player choice label and its placement, and we're going to change player to computer. Now we're going to leave this blank obviously because we're going to configure it later and add the text once the user and computer has made their choice. It will make sense a bit more later in this tutorial. Now the row is still going to be the same and then we're going to change it to be placed on the west. Cool. So I've got that as well. Uh, actually we've done this should be west. My bad. West on the player choice label and east on the computer choice label. So I've gone ahead and changed the positioning of the player choice label to west and computer choice label to east because that's just how it is from before just to carry on with the way it's been. Cool. Now we also need another label to actually declare the outcome of the game. So whether it was a win or whether it was a lose, whatever it is. So we can do outcome label equals label master uh, come from equals Calibri and comma 12. Now we're going to do outcome label dot grid and we're going to place it on row equals 3, comma sticky equals north. So it's still on the same row, but this is going to be in the center. So the computer choice, I mean the player choice, is going to be placed on the left. Um, the outcome is going to be placed in the middle and the computer choice is going to place on the right. So fair enough. That's how it's going to be. Cool. And they're not going to have any text to begin with. We're going to add it later on dynamically. So that's all the labels that we actually need. Now let's go ahead and add our buttons. So if you guys notice, as I'm going, I'm pushing this master.main loop line um, at the bottom. So this is going to be the last line that needs to exist in your code. If any, if you put it anywhere in the middle, it's not going to work properly. It's going to crash. So my next thing is going to be creating the buttons. So the buttons are going to allow the user to select between rock, paper or scissors. So I'm going to place my first button on the screen, say master and then text equals rock. I'm going to also change my width of the buttons to about 15, let's say. 15 and then command equals, we're going to have to use lambda here. The reason why is we are going to have a function 
that pretty much um, inherits the whatever this button value is. So the value that this um, button is going to pass to our function is going to be rock. So our function is going to be called outcome handler. We obviously haven't made it yet, but we're going to make it in a second. And then in the function, we're going to pass in rock because this is the rock button. So we need to pass in the rock button. Cool. Now, since that's sorted, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, now it's giving me a red squiggly line because as I said, the function doesn't exist. And then I'm going to do dot grid row equals full comma sticky equals rest oops rest comma pad x equals five comma pad y equals five cool let's go ahead and run this and obviously we might have an error because we haven't actually got a command for this so we're probably going to have an error at, at the moment so that's fine um, we have a rock button though we're going to go ahead and do the same for the two more buttons because we need paper and we need scissor scissors cool so rock paper and scissor and we all we need to do is change the rock from the second one to paper so that our function knows that the user selected paper and then from the third one we need to change it to scissors so that our function knows our function which is going to be created in a moment that's outcome handler knows that the user selected scissors i'm going to go ahead and change the sticky equals to north because i want this right in the middle and i'm going to take off the padding x in here i'm only going to need the padding y now we're going to go on to the last one the last button and row still remains the same sticky equals east because we want it to be on the right side of the screen we need to add pad x and pad y so that's fine cool let's run this quickly to see how it looks like and we have a decent looking gui rock paper scissors these are the three buttons and the user will click on this button to actually find out what the outcome is cool very nice so now we're going to create the outcome handler in a bit but first off we're going to create a dummy label to leave some space at the bottom of the screen because if i run this now you'd notice that this um, bottom of the screen is pretty close to the buttons we're going to create a dummy label to kind of create some space there so the label is going to be place on master and then dot grid row equals five so it just kind of creates a blank row for now cool now have i got okay i've got my master dot main loop i started panicking there for a moment anyway let's save that and run that to see if it worked and it has as you see it's left a little chin space down here if you don't like that it's totally up to you your preference cool so within 12 minutes actually or 13 minutes we've created the whole gui for this application now it's the logic bit that we have to deal with. That's a pretty good time actually compared to all the other um, tutorials I've made. Anyway, the logic bit is not too hard so we're going to deal with that now. So first of all, let me explain. Every time I click these buttons, the outcome handler function is going to be run. Now if I click rock, the outcome function handler will be run and a value of rock will be passed. If I click on paper, outcome function handler will be run with a value of paper. And then the same for scissors as well. So let's go ahead and actually create that function now. So to create the function, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's see. So I'm gonna go up here. Let's just close this. I'm gonna go up here onto my main screen. Just before the main screen, I'm gonna actually create the function. So functions. And then in there, I'm going to do def outcome handler which is the function name and then we are going to have in there user choice because that's what's going to be passed by the button now before we actually go ahead and do anything we need to actually declare the computer score variables and the player score variable in the start of the scope so how we're going to do that is we're going to create a little section up here for variables before functions so i'm going to create a um it's going to be for dictionary and bars now i'm going to call my computer score comp score and then it's going to start off at zero and i'm going to call my player score player score and it's going to start at zero like any other game if you wanted to start to add a different value go ahead and do that cool now let's go ahead in our outcome handler function and we need to globalize those variables comp score and player score so that they can actually be accessed from up here and it doesn't assume that you want it to be local to this function. 
school. So global com score and then global player score. That sorts that out. Now we're going to be using the actual variables to reassign the score later on. And now we need to actually generate a random number like we did in the last tutorial. So random number <coughs> equals random dot rand int one comma three because we only have three outcomes rock paper or scissors this random number is going to help us uh, make the computer choice between rock paper or scissors so <clears throat> for the computer choice in the last um, tutorial to convert the number into an actual choice I kind of did a a long work method in which I use a function we could actually do a lot shorter do it a lot shorter by creating an, an array so by creating an array um, of let's say outcomes equals array first value is going to be rock second value is going to be paper and my third value is going to be scissors cool so now we have an array with first value of rock, second value of paper, and third value of um, scissors. Let's start the um, random number range from 0 to 2, so that it goes 0, 1, 2. So in this way we can actually use this number to reference to the part of the array that we're looking for, and that way we'll just get the rock, paper, or scissors straight away without having to use any if or else statements. So if I do print outcome, uh, outcomes, um, then you use a square bracket, and then random number each time this button is pressed we are actually going to be greeted with a different outcome from the computer let's run this and now when I run it uh, outcome handler is not defined right. actually I think it's the previous errors cool so what I'm going to do is going to delete this whole thing because it's giving me previous errors and I'm going to run it again now cool no errors rock and as you see the computer selected rock paper scissors okay why is it showing me okay actually it is working so if I click on rock the computer selected paper if I selected paper computer selected paper let's select paper again this time computer selected scissors let's select paper again this time computer selected scissors again paper again paper so as you guys see it is working so the computer is changing its choice each time we're clicking on a button. Sometimes it gets stuck on the same choice but that's completely because we have a very small range. We only have three numbers. Cool. So that's that sorted out. So we have the computer choice. We can now assign computer choice a new variable equals um, outcomes square brackets and then uh, what was it? Random number. Brain just froze there for a second. Cool. So we have computer choice equals outcome number, which means we have the converted outcome from the computer of its selection. Now let's go ahead and do some of the magic stuff. So let's go ahead and add um, whatever player choice there is being made and the computer choice that's being made to the label that we created earlier. So if you remember, if you go down here, we had a label called player choice, which we didn't add any text to. Same with the computer choice, where we didn't add any text. We're going to be adding that text right here once the selection has been made. So we're going to call it with its name. So let's see, player choice label dot config is what we use to add anything to it later. Um, foreground equals red, because why not? Uh, let's just give it color codes, you know. Text equals player choice um, and then we use a plus string we're going to be converting the user choice that's passed through to a string I mean it's probably already a string but just in case it's like a fill switch and then we're going to do computer choice label dot config where the foreground equals green the text is going to be um, computer choice colon plus a string and then computer choice which we just stored right here just a second ago so now we should be able to get the computer and the user choices let's run this rock computer uh, player chose rock computer chose scissors paper player chose paper computer chose paper scissors player chose scissors and computer chose rock so it's perfectly working 
Now we need to update the scores as well. That's what we're going to be doing now. So to update the scores, as you may remember, we created two variables up here, comp score and player score. So we're going to be using those and updating them as and when we actually win or lose. So before we actually go in and do that, we need to know um, who won in the competition. So in my previous tutorial, I showed you guys how to use a dictionary to make um, implementing this logic a lot easier. So I'm going to go through it again in this tutorial, but if you want an in-depth um, explanation on how to use it, I'm going to be linking the two tutorials on dictionaries that I created before. So go ahead and watch those if you want a thorough understanding of how it works. Cool. So now we need to add the dictionary of different outcomes that we can have. Now I'm going to actually call this, um, I don't know, uh, let's just call the scammer for now. Because it is sort of like a scammer for of different information and outcomes. Cool. So now we're going to have in this dictionary key called rock. And then we're going to assign the value of the key called rock. Then we're going to use a comma. And we're going to have a key called paper. And we're going to assign the value of paper to uh, another dictionary. And then we're going to have another key called scissors and we're going to assign the value of the key scissors to an empty dictionary again perfect so the now we need to just do a comparison so rock against rock will be what score let's say if rock against rock is a draw obviously we just give it a score of one now rock against paper would obviously be a loss so the score would update to zero now rock against scissors what would the outcome of that be it will be two because rock would win so on a win, we award the user with a score of 2, on a loss, we award the user with a score of 0, and on a draw, we award the user with a score of 1. Cool. So just like we did for rock, we're going to find out all the events for paper. So what if paper was played against rock? We are going to get a 2 because paper wins against rock. Then what if it was played against paper? Well, obviously it's going to be 1 because it's a draw. And then paper against scissors is going to be two because obviously um actually it's going to be zero well i don't know what i went wrong in my brain there so paper against scissors obviously paper is going to lose now last one scissors against rock will obviously lose then we have scissors against papers which is going to win and then scissors against scissors which is going to cause a draw so these are literally all the all the schema that we're going to need so these are all the events that could actually occur we are avoiding making these of if and else statements because they are jarring and really long to go through so i'm going to show you how to use the schema to actually um, find the score and update the player score or computer score based on who won so this is going to be very interesting so put your thinking hats on because we are about to do a bit of a uh, a bit of a confusing one so we are going to go back into our outcome handler function which is triggered each time the user makes a choice on whether they select rock paper or scissors now we are going to create a variable called outcome well let's just call this result because there's a lot of outcome stuff going on. so result is going to um, actually find out what the score is so let's do outcome equals now we are going to use our schema that we just created and then we in our schema we're firstly going to look for the key of user choice and secondly we are going to look for the key of the computer choice so what do i mean by that this is so confusing cool let's copy and paste this up here and then explain so when i say result equals schema the first thing that this dictionary or, or this statement does is it goes ahead and it selects this dictionary called schema now let's assume the user was to select rock now if the user selects rock, the key is rock and the value is that is returned is this dictionary right here. Now once we're in this dictionary, we still have key and values. So when when I if the user choice was rock and the computer choice was paper for example, um, then we would land up right here and the value would be zero. So rock against paper is obviously a loss, so we get zero. So that's how it works. Okay, so it will pretty much work for anything that you enter in there. Cool, so I'm going to paste it back where it belongs to. Oh, why am I doing that? Computer choice. Cool, so we have our results variable right here. And that will pretty much just return. Um, if it's a 1, then we know that it was a draw. If it's a 0, we know it was a loss. And if it was a, uh, if it was a 2, we know it was a win. Cool. So now we need to do 
uh, some if statements, just three actually. I'm trying to avoid as much as possible, but just three, just three. So bear with me. So I am going to erase this gibberish that just got produced for some reason, and then press enter after the labels update for the choice, and then type in if outcome equals two, then we need to do player choice equals player choice plus two and then we need to do player score equals uh, two, 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 two. actually we need to why did I do choice here it needs to be player score my bad brain froze so we're updating the player score here so if the outcome was two that pretty much means that the user's choice was against the computer choice wins so if it was two we know that the computer won if it's a zero that we know then we know that the computer okay so if it was two we know that the user wins but if it the if the score was zero we know the user lost and the computer won so that's the logic we're going with so in this case the computer wins i mean the user wins so we update the player score and then we are going to also update the player score label so player score label dot config um, foreground equals foreground let's just actually let's just do text equals player colon just like the last one plus string player score we have to convert it to a string because it's obviously a text um, type so we've got the player score now we need to do outcome label which is going to show the outcome dot config foreground equals blue and this is the label that we left blank earlier in the tutorial and then text equals speech marks outcome and then we say player one because obviously if the score is two then the player wins which means his choice against the computer was good enough now this outcome I don't know why I typed an outcome it's actually result so if result equals two then we need to do this stuff which is updating this player score by two um, uh, actually updating the screen to show the most updated version of the player score and then also displaying the outcome of the game so player wins now let's go ahead and do the other outcome so elif result equals one that just means that was a draw so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste these lines right here and then in here I'm going to leave player score as it is but I'm going to change player score equals player score plus one then I'm going to copy the line and then paste it again because we need to update the computer score as well since it's a draw so both players get one point computer score comp score equals um, computer score plus one and then we need to update both labels and the outcome as well so this is fine we just got to copy and paste this again because that's the player score label we just got to update the computer score label as well so computer score label dot config let's change the player to computer and then we change the string player score to comp score cool and then we say outcome draw now last but not the least we do the event for when the result equals zero which means the user lost and the computer won in that case cool so we just do something like we got to copy and paste um, the computer stuff so I'm going to copy and paste the computer score update computer score equals computer score plus one okay I've got an, a logical issue here so let's go back to line 31 and change comp score equals to comp score plus one instead of player score plus one and this is actually going to be comp score cool I seem to be spotting most of the logical errors that's pretty good so let's update the player score with plus two because if the computer wins it gets a plus two just like the user did and then let's go and update the computer label and the outcome label too so I'm going to copy those two lines and then paste them down here so computer score label is going to be set to the computer score which is fine and then computer outcome label or the outcome label is going to be set to computer one cool 
And that seems to be about it for the logic actually. Is there anything I missed out? I don't think so. So let's deal with any errors that we have. Hopefully we don't have any. So rock. And as you see right here, it's working flawlessly which I'm really happy about. With Now it says player choice was rock which we selected rock, it's fine. Um, outcome was player 1 because rock played against scissors, the computer plays scissors. Oh, that's sad. Let's go again with the rock. And as you see right here, it remains the same. Let's go again with rock. Uh, we ran out of luck. This time the computer chose paper and paper against rock, as you know guys, is a win for the computer. Let's go ahead and select scissors. Now this time it was scissors against rock, which means the computer wins again. Computer won. Scissors again. Oh, the computer is cunning. He chose the same one again. Cool, we finally got a score. And that's about it, guys. If you keep playing, it will keep updating your score. I mean, it's infinite right now. Your challenge for this tutorial would be to actually um, program into the logical layer of this um, function. Program a stopper so that once the player score or the computer score reaches, I don't know, like 10, you announce the winner of the game. So if player reaches, I don't know, a score of 10 before the computer, then player wins. If computer reaches a score of 10 before the player, then computer wins. And if they both reach the score at the same time, which is very unlikely to happen, it's a draw. So yeah, that's your challenge, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I did enjoy a lot because this was um, kind of jumping into intermediate stuff rather than just um, slogging around with beginner stuff, which is fine as well. But I just wanted to hop in into a bit more intermediate stuff so you guys can learn a bit more. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, hope this was actually helpful to you in any way or the other. Like always, this um, code is going to be stated in the description so you can go ahead and uh, download it and change it to your needs. But I recommend watching it through and actually understanding how it works. Um, if you guys want to actually support the channel, you can do so by purchasing a highlighted message or a custom emoji from the super chat during the video premiere. Um, I'm not forcing anyone to do so, but if you would like to do it um, out of gratitude, go ahead and do so. It really helps out. And last thing I wanted to say was, guys, thanks a lot for all the support that you guys have been showing. I really do appreciate it. If you guys could keep sharing the videos like you have, it would be amazing. And I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial, guys. Peace out.